Good evening. Welcome to the 2012 School Board Candidate Forum for the Midland Public Schools, which is co-sponsored by the Midland Branch of the American Association of University Women and the Midland Area League of Women Voters. The American Association of University Women, or AAUW, advances equity for women and girls through advocacy, education, philanthropy, and research. The League of Women Voters is a national, nonpartisan political organization that's open to all citizens, both men and women. It is committed to the informed and active participation of citizens in government. Neither organization supports or opposes candidates. I am Betty Chenoweth, co-president of the AAUW Midland Branch and will serve as your moderator tonight. Donna DeVinney from the League of Women Voters will be our official timekeeper. We are very pleased to co-sponsor this program to meet and hear from three of the four candidates running for two four-year term positions on the Board of Education of the Midland Public Schools. Scott McFarland, Joyce Perry, Kimberly Vanderkellen, and Samantha Watson. Samantha is unable to be with us tonight because of personal reasons, and she regrets this very much. We hope that what you hear and see tonight will help you decide how to vote in the upcoming election on Tuesday, November the 6th. Each of the three candidates will have two minutes for an opening statement. Following these introductions, I will pose a series of questions. Candidates will be allotted a two-minute response. Before going to the next question, there will be an opportunity for a one-minute reply if anyone desires to make one. At the request of any candidate, I will be glad to repeat the question on the floor. As each candidate responds, our timer will raise a warning card when 30 seconds remain. When the time is up, I will stop the speaker, allowing only the completion of a sentence. After the question and answer period, each candidate may give a one-minute closing statement. The candidates participated in a drawing to determine the order in which they will speak. That order will be maintained and rotated throughout the program. So now it's on to the introductions. Um, Kimberly Vanderkellen was the one who drew the first number, <laughs> and so she will be the first speaker this evening. Kimberly? Good evening. I'm Kim Vanderkellen, and I'm very excited about the opportunity to potentially join the Midland Public Schools Board of Education to ensure excellence in education for all Midland Public Schools students. I'm a Michigan State graduate with a background in accounting. I'm a licensed CPA and have a board, been on the board of SMI Snowmakers located in Midland for 15 years. Working with other board members, I will help create an environment of open communication and excellent leadership that Midland Public Schools and the community deserve. My husband Joe and I have three lovely daughters, two who are successful graduates from Midland Public Schools. My daughter Brooke is a finance major at Michigan State and Sierra is a pre-med major at U of M. Christina is my youngest daughter. She's a seventh grader at Jefferson Middle School. I have been very active with their education and know the school system well. Last year, curiosity and interest and the desire to give back to the community let me, <coughs> led me to join a Midland Public Schools International Baccalaureate Committee. This committee work energized me to become even more deeply involved and follow the path to joining the school board. Midland is a vibrant, thriving community, winning numerous awards. I will work hard with Midland Public School leadership and the Board of Education to create an all-encompassing vision for the schools worthy of Midland, which will showcase all of our students' achievements and showcase the excellent teachers we have at Midland Public Schools. These programs, policies, and procedures will ensure that all students are prepared for the 21st century jobs. I will work with experts and local corporations, foundations, teacher and community advisory committees. I realize how blessed Midland is to have local corporations and foundations engaged in helping bring uh, programs of excellence to Midland Public Schools. With the other board members and leadership of Midland Public Schools, I will work hard to maximize these opportunities for all of our students and teachers. Thank you, Kim. Next is Joyce Perry. <coughs> Good evening, my name is Joyce Perry. 
Um, I want to first of all thank the League of Women Voters and the AAUW for hosting this forum for us and in inviting the four candidates to answer some questions. Um, Midland County has been my home for 19 years. I live here with my husband and my stepson Samuel. My two older children, Dustin and Jacob, are products of Midland Public Schools. They attended um, Plymouth Northeast and both graduated from Midland High. My passion is being an educator. I fulfill this passion as a Waukee International study, study School in Saginaw where I teach 6th to ninth grade social studies. I received my Bachelor's of Science in Education at Central Michigan University. I received my Master's from Marigrove College in Detroit and I'm currently working on my um, EDD at North Central University with a focus on educational technology. I also own a small internet business that we run out of our home. If I'm elected to the school board, my goals for the next four years will be to put the interests of our students first. First, I will do this by being transparent and fiscally responsible to the community and the staff so that the children can receive the best education possible. Second, I want, I want to strengthen our educational excellence and best practice at all district levels. And finally, I want to <coughs> create a relationship with all parties that is trustworthy and fair. It's our students we are accountable to, and without these pri three priorities, we cannot receive the education. They, c they cannot receive the education Midland Public Schools has the reputation of giving their students. Thank you, Joyce. And next is Scott McFarland. Good evening. I would also like to thank the Midland Area League of Women Voters and the AAUW for allowing us to participate in this forum tonight. Uh, as indicated, my name is Scott McFarland. Um, I'm 34 years old and a licensed attorney. Uh, however, I presently am greatly enjoying the opportunity of being a stay-at-home dad. Uh, my wife and my family, uh, which consists of three children, my oldest son, Sebastian, who's four years old, uh, his brother, Connor, and our newborn daughter, uh, Cameron, uh, have been living in Midland uh, since we moved here in January 2011. Uh, I've decided to run for a seat on the Board of Education because like many of you in this audience and many of you viewing, uh, I have a vested interest in the ongoing success of the Midland public school system. Uh, as I stated, I have three children, the oldest of which is going to be entering uh, Seabird Elementary School hopefully next fall. I think I'm a uniquely qualified for a seat on the board because I'm a dedicated team player uh, who's very motivated in continuing the success of this board and the success of the school system. I am committed to this community. I have both management and leadership experience. I'm a trained mediator and I'm an excellent problem solver. In terms of dealing with decisions, I'm analytical, objective, and fair, and I have no problem making critical decisions as I see fit and following what I feel is right. And I want to emphasize that any decision that I make as a board member is going to be what I feel is in the best interest of our children. This is a district that's compared to others on a national level for its excellence and all around general student success. I want to see that continue and if elected as a board member, I will do all that I can do to work with the teachers, the administrators, and students to ensure that Midland Public Schools continues to move forward. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Now I think we're ready for the questions. Uh, the first one will be to Joyce Perry. As a board member, what actions would you support to ensure the elementary program of Midland Public Schools meets the needs of Midland's children? Um, first, I'd, li I'd like to say that I've recently attended some board meetings and um, they have passed a, a, uh, a no they've passed to buy iPods for the elementary schools. They're going to pilot a program. They've purchased 570 iPods for the elementary schools. They're going to um, have the teachers um, learn how to use the iPods in the classroom, then they're going to deliver them to the students where the students will be able to use them in the classrooms. I think this is a wonderful idea. Um, I'm very excited that Midland is moving forward in the technology field. Um, my dissertation is on technology in the classroom, so this excites me very much. I, um, I want to make sure, though, that when they do implement this program, that Midland follows up with their teachers, that they give them the support and training that they need, um, so that our elementary students can use these as tools in education and not just use them as a gaming tool or something to have fun with in class. They can have fun while they're learning, but the teachers need the support and they need to um, follow through with that for the teachers so the students can learn. 
Thank you, Joyce. Um, Scott. Could you repeat the question? Yes, I sure can. As a board member, <coughs> what actions would you support to ensure the elementary program of Midland Public Schools meets the needs of Midland's children? I, well, I'd like to say that initially that I agree with, with Joyce 100%, and I was also at that meeting um, where they passed the iPad initiative, I think is what they called it. And listen, I think that's amazing. I, I went home and, and I told my wife about it, and that just really reiterates uh, one of the reasons why we came here was, was the, the different initiatives the school system is taking. And that is a good start, but it really, really needs to be supported and it needs to be followed through, uh, both with funding, because we have however many elementary school, elementary school students, there's 500 iPads. So it's a test program. And it's got to be looked at and it's got to be, has to be done very carefully to ensure its success. Um, beyond that, I think, you know, we can try and lower the numbers in the elementary schools in terms of the student to teacher, student to support staff ratio. Um, and beyond that, uh, really it's just gonna have to be, I would develop more of an answer after interacting with the teachers at that level. Thank you, Scott. Sure. Kimberly. Well, I would like to say that I think we have an excellent uh, teachers at the elementary level, but I would like to optimize classroom sizes. We have, um, some elementaries with very small classrooms and some elementaries with over large class sizes. And as I've been on the IB committee, uh, it is there is a program for elementary students, which is absolutely wonderful and emphasizes citizenship. And um, I think it's so great for these kids to learn. Citizenship is the opposite of bullying. We uh, have a no bullying po po policy right now, but citizenship is um, at this end of the functional spectrum. So I think that's what we really need to go forward with. And I was also out at the New Tech unveiling at Meridian the other day and spoke with Joe Asiala, who is the creator of that system. And I asked him if there was an elementary program. And he said that, yes, there's an incubator. And I would like to uh, investigate that to see what level quality and compare it to the International Baccalaureate and mm -hmm. see if that's the best way to bring the technology into the elementary. Of course, I agree with iPads. I'm a big iPad fan, and I think it's game-changing that the kids have instant access to research at all times in the classroom. Thank you, Kim. Does anyone want to make another comment about that question before we move on? If not, let's go to number two. And Scott, you have the privilege of answering this one first. As a Midland Public Schools Board of Education candidate, what visions do you bring for maximizing the use of technology both as a tool of learning and an objective of learning? Just to, I guess, reiterate, uh, I think a lot of that was, was put forth very succinctly at the last board meeting, at which I would like to commend the existing board for, for passing that and, and getting that underway. Um, technology is the future. Um, it's, it's a tool for teachers that needs to be completely utilized and completely understood. Um, it's uh, a great tool, I think, for students. And, and my vision as a board member would be to expand that as much as possible. Um, and hopefully the results from this iPad initiative are going to be positive because it's very exciting. And that can be the, the possibilities are limitless to place iPads in the hands of all of the Midland Public School children and to give them that opportunity to learn instantly. Uh, wherever they're at, they have access to a remote system. So that, you know, is the one thing that I'm really, really excited about in terms of technology with the Midland Public School system. Thank you. Joyce? Oh, I get to go second? Um, just to piggyback on what I said before, just like Scott, um, I'm, I'm very excited to see Midland moving towards technology. Um, I, I think, like I said before, that the staff needs to be trained. There needs to be support. We need to learn how to use these in the right way. So many times technology is bought for schools, and teachers don't know how to use it. They don't know how to incorporate it into their lessons. We need to have that support for the teachers. Um, 
an example is my dissertation is the use of smart boards in a middle school classroom. I am studying a building that is fully technology, it has full technology everywhere, it has three computer labs, every teacher has a smart board and a document camera in their classroom, but the teachers aren't using them. And my dissertation is why are they not using them? They have all this great technology. And the, and the things that I'm discovering within my studies is that they're not getting the support they need, they're not getting the training they need, and I, I want to make sure that Midland Public Schools gives that to their teachers because what good is the technology if no one knows how to use it? Sorry, thank you, Joyce. And Kimberly. I'll just talk about new tech again. It was absolutely amazing to go out and watch the students th during the first week give presentations to the entire audience and using the latest technology. Uh, so I spoke with Joe Osiala, the creator of new tech, and uh, he was telling me about the training for the teachers and how they go out to, last year it was at Grand Rapids, and they have a week of training, and then they come back and start to teach the students. So I think it's very important that we have the proper training, and I think new tech may be the way to go for that training. And I think it instant access to research and being able to decipher that information is what 21st century jobs will demand. I support in initiatives to give all students instant access to research and increase their ability to communicate with others. Thank you. Does anyone care to make further comment about the question? I just want to sure. just say that I, I don't think technology is a replacement for teachers. And I didn't, hopefully I didn't convey that message during my answer. Um, but the, the technology is going to give our students a huge advantage going into the 21st century uh, versus other schools. Um, so I'm excited to pursue that. Thank you. Any others? Okay, question number three. Kimberly, I think it's your turn. How do you plan to build a positive relationship with teachers and other school staff members? That's a very good question. <laughs> I think through the IB and the new tech initiatives, we're going to have to have advisory committees. And while working on those advisory committees, you have a chance to develop a relationship. Um, as I had a meeting with the teachers and had a chance to talk with them, I just had a wonderful time. And we had, <coughs> it was so nice to be able to ask them their point of view, where they see problems at the school because they're the eyes and ears of the schools and they're per the first line of defense for the children so I think their input is very valuable and I also would like them to work on the committees with the foundations and the corporations who are interested in bringing these initiatives to Midland Public Schools so the earlier they can get on board the quicker we can bring it to Midland Public Schools. Thank you. Um, Joyce, you're next. Um, could you repeat the question? I sure <laughs> will. How do you plan to build a positive relationship with teachers and other school staff members? Okay, I think the biggest thing is communication. Um, I plan to have an open door policy. Um, I want people to feel free to come and talk to me about things. I want them to trust me when they bring me their concerns. Um, there needs to be transparency between me and the rest of the people that I'm working with so that I do build up that trust. I'm, I will listen to the staff concerns. I will try to create a sense of community and uh, I'll respect them and treat them fairly the, the same way that I want to be treated. When I send out an email, I have at the bottom of my um, email a little quote. It says, if I met myself, would I like what I saw? And that's how I want to treat people, you know. If, if I met myself, would people want to talk to me when they came up to me on the street? And I want them to feel comfortable. I want them to feel like they can tell me their feelings, their concerns. And I, I want to build a trusting relationship with all of the staff of Midland Public Schools and the community. Thank you. <clears throat> Scott. Um, I, I think the best way to build a, a good relationship is to just get in the trenches with the teachers and the staff and everybody who's out there working in the schools. Uh, I think that can be done very easily by spending some time at the schools, um, meeting with the educators and listening to their concerns and actually following through those concerns to build that trust that when they tell me something, I'm going to do something about it or at least try to do something about it. And that can be done just by simply presenting the issues at board meetings, whether they're public or private, um, and just visiting, really just visiting the schools, attending school events, 
and being as involved as I possibly can be. Thank you. Uh, anyone else care to make more comments about the question? Okay, going on. Um, Joyce, I think it's your turn again. If cuts are again required to balance the budget, what are your most must be protected priorities and how will you go about res preserving them? If new money should be needed to accomplish this purpose, what funding sources could you suggest? That's, okay. that's a lot of words. If it you is. <laughs> report it or repeat it, I'll be glad to. Um, well, let me answer the first part. If there are, are um, things that need to be cut, the, the thing I want to protect is the number of t the ratio of students to teachers. That is the most important. Being a teacher, I know what it's like to sit in a classroom with 34, 35 students. Um, I, I feel that the children are being cheated if they're in a classroom that has too many students. There's, the learning does not take place that, that could happen with a smaller class size. Um, for example, we, there was a kindergarten classroom with 47 students in it at the beginning of the year. The parents had to go and beg, and I'm not saying this is Midland, the parents had to go and beg at, at this school to get another um, kindergarten teacher. You can't teach a class with 47 kindergartners in it. That's what I want to preserve. I want to preserve a small student teacher ratio. Um, and what's the second part? How the second part is if new money should be needed to accomplish this purpose, what funding sources would you suggest? Um, Midland has, um, all the schools in, in Michigan have a financial challenge. The, the state is not giving them any more money. Um, Midland does have a large reserve. Um, it's good to have a little reserve, but I, I'm not quite sure we need as much as Midland Public Schools has. Uh, along with that, I know a lot of my coworkers that write grants to get funds for their education. Um, I, I just think that, that we can come up with creative ways to use the monies that we already have to uh, maintain the education and the, the classroom sizes that we want. Okay, thank you. Scott? Can you repeat the question? I please? sure can. <laughs> If cuts are again required to balance the budget, what are your must-be-protected priorities, and how will you go about preserving them? And the second part is, if new money should be needed to accomplish this purpose, what funding sources could you suggest? Okay. Well, I'll tell you, the first part is, is a difficult question for me to answer because, honestly, I don't know the budget uh, line by line. So I think to give you a very an intelligent answer to that end um, would require me to just read through the budget and, and really analyze to see where cuts could be made uh, to, to balance things out but obviously the overall goal is to protect the children of the district so in looking in a broad spectrum whatever I w whatever is necessary to to protect their interest whether it's uh, like Joyce mentioned smaller classroom sizes or whatever the case may be that would be my, my priority at the time. But as I sit here today, I don't know what those issues may be. They, they kind of have to deal with them on an as-needed basis. Uh, as far as the money goes, um, I, I would seek to renew different endowments that the, the school system has through various corporations. Uh, obviously, there are, there are several state and federal grants um, that are out there and are, I assume are being utilized by the school system. Um, but there are, there are also other grants out there that, whether for technology, whether for uh, career, different uh, skilled trades, or what, whatever they may be, uh, I think those need to be utilized as well in terms of bringing new money in. Okay. Kimberly? My first priority to protect is excellence in the classroom, and that is to have an optimal class size. I personally think K through 2 should have class size is no larger than 20 and um, when my daughter Sierra she had to switch from Cook School over to Woodcrest and there was a very wise principal there Judy Plummer and she had given me her ratios from teacher to student and uh, I was very pleased with Woodcrest for the three years that Sierra was there so the K through 2 I would prefer 20 maximum class size and then third through fifth grade prefer uh, maximum class size of 25 
as for the budget, I am actually very optimistic about the state of Michigan. Governor Rick Snyder will be soon announcing major changes in school funding. I'm optimistic as I have read about his P through 20 vision, which you would think is preschool through grade 20, but it is actually prenatal to lifelong learning support. Governor Rick Snyder's vision is private and public entities working together for the benefit of our communities. We are blessed to know that our local corporations and foundations are eager to work with public schools and the P through 20 vision should give us a framework to create a seamless education experience and support for students preparing them for 21st century jobs. I'm also in favor of a millage at the level where we can maximize local benefits without any recapture paid to other communities due to going over the local allowed limit. Thank you. Does anyone care to make further comment about the question? Okay, we'll move on. Um, this one is for Scott to begin. Schools nationwide have seen an increase in sexual <coughs> harassment, particularly cyber harassment among students. Recently, Midland Public Schools has adopted an anti-bullying policy. What actions do you believe are appropriate for school district personnel to take to prevent and or mitigate this harassment in or near our school facilities? Uh, I think the appropriate action is simply proper training um, of the school personnel to identify uh, where cyber bullying or cyber harassment may exist and how to effectively deal with it when it does pop up. Um, there also has to be uh, the correct software in place that will prevent access uh, to potentially obscene sites or places where cyberbullying or uh, cyber harassment could stem from. Uh, so I think it's just simply a matter of proper training, uh, which will trickle down through the students. The students have to be made aware of it as well, and having the uh, right technology in place to prevent it. Okay, thank you. Um, Kimberly. Okay. I like our zero tolerance for bullying, and my daughter is at the middle school at Jefferson, and we have had some issues with the cyberbullying, and Mike Decker handled it perfectly. He called the parents in, he call, called the child in, he called all students that were in any way involved, and it was definitely zero tolerance, and we have not heard of another problem since. Um, what I really like is the IB International Baccalaureate Program, though, teaching the kids citizenship, filling in that hole where um, people who bully, sometimes they're just bored. If you give them something positive to do, I'm a big believer in that, then you can completely change that dynamic. So the IB trains these kids in kindness and citizenship and gives them positive uh, volunteer things to do, even from a young age. Thank you. Joyce. Um, well, bullying's been around for a long time. Um, Cyberbullying is, is quite new with the uh, advent of the internet and social media. Um, the thing that I think we need to do is we need to look at our, for all types of bullying, we need to look at our school district and we need to look at it from the top down. Um, we need to analyze our schools if, um, uh, someone come in and analyze how, analyze how effective our bullying program is. They would look at administration, they would look at staff, they would look at students, and they could analyze the, the whole district to find out where bullying is coming from. Um, bullying is a culture, and, and sometimes it comes from other places besides just the students, and we need to figure out where the bullying is coming from. Um, we need to enforce our policies and be strict with our rules. I was looking at Midland's policy. It does seem kind of vague, um, it, I'm, and I know we had to put it in place because it was mandated by the state, but I want, I want to see that um, the, the policy is enforced, the rules are set in place, the rules are followed, um, everyone is treated fairly when it comes to the bullying, we need a safe environment, and uh, we need to educate our staff in how to handle bullying and how not to be a bully themselves. Thank you. 
Um, anyone else care to make further comments about that question? I will add that in addition to what I previously stated, enforcement is also absolutely necessary. Mm -hmm. And that's all I wanted to add. Okay. Any others? Oh, I'll add one more. So the uh, non-bullying policy started, and um, previously when my daughters, my older daughters had gone to the middle school, they were a little bit worried about being bullied, so they didn't want to stand out or speak up. And um, when Christina's group, my seventh grader, they went into middle school, they saw bullying, well, Mike Decker has this box, and it's, you just put in a bully slip. Well, these <laughs> girls take advantage of it, and Mike Decker <laughs> enforces it. So that reduced, he said, Bullying was down over 70% last year, so I'm very impressed, and I think Midland Public Schools is on the right track with that. Do any of you think that um, bullying is not reported by students who have been affected by it? I I'm sure it happens all the time. Um, I see it in my, in my school. Um, children are being picked on, but they don't want to step up and say anything because mm -hmm. they're afraid that they're going to get bullied more. I, I would have to agree with that and assume that's the case, although I don't have any personal interaction with students on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, I, I've got to imagine that, that it does occur and people uh, don't step up and, and voice their concerns. Thank you very much. Okay, the next question is for Kimberly. It seems that reduced student enrollment mandated, mandated school programs and shrinking revenues make change inevitable. What changes do school boards need to plan for now? Well, as I mentioned earlier, Rick Snyder's um, new initiative, it's impossible to plan for, but we can read up on it and what he uh, wants to do. And the key is that he wants the public entities to work with the private entities, which is how we need to create a vision for Midland Public Schools so that when uh, No, so that we can create a vision so that when the local corporations and foundations want to do donate, they will have an area where they will be able to donate and in an area that they're passionate about. Uh, as I was on the IB committee and um, as I attended the 21st Century Schools Forum, I saw the uh, level of engagement that the um, local corporations and foundations want to have with Midland Public Schools. So I think that is going to be very key to ensuring that we continue with the excellence of Midland Public Schools. And I also think that we will be able to attract students from uh, who are leaving the district, and also we may be able to attract some of the people who are homeschooling their children. We just have to come up with some programs that uh, of excellence and talk, reach out to these people and have advisory committees, and I think we can bring them back and we can re stop the decline. Thank you. <coughs> Joyce? Could you repeat the question? I sure will. It seems that reduced student enrollment, mandated school programs, and shrinking revenues make change inevitable. What changes do school boards need to plan for now? Well, obviously we always have to look to the state because they're always, obviously, like you mentioned in the question, that they're taking, they're changing our school funding. Um, we need to, um, ensure that if if we have to make adjustments in um, in our budgets if we have to make decreases in staff or if we're asking people to take a pay cut if we're asking certain um, working groups to take a pay cut that all groups are taking that pay cut um, and the benefit issue also it, it needs to be equal acro across the board. It can't just be from one or two working groups where we have to um, change our budget. I also think that, um, trying, like Kimberly said, trying to get students into the district, um, I know that we need to work harder to, to try to get students to stay in the district. Our, our, our education is a wonderful education in Midland. That's why I moved back here. Um, when I married my husband and I wanted my stepson to go to Midland Public Schools because my children received such a great education. 
we need to bring back programs that we've gotten rid of that help our students and that would maybe bring in some of the homeschoolers or people from the outer lying districts. When my son was in high school, they had a great um, construction program that they no longer have. Um, another vocational program, he went through the welding school um, that doesn't exist anymore. I, the welding may exist, but I know the construction doesn't exist anymore. We need to bring programs back like that for kids that aren't really sure if they want to go to college and they want to have a career when they get out of high school or something they can work their way through. So I think that's a way where we can try to get more students back into the district. Thank you, Joyce. <clears throat> Scott? Could you repeat the question, I sure please? Can. <laughs> it seems that reduced student enrollment, mandated school programs, and shrinking revenues make change inevitable. What changes do school boards need to plan for now? Well, change is always inevitable. Um, I think the change, the, the thing that we need to be prepared for or, or that we need to have in place is financial security. That will allow us to adapt to oncoming changes. The problem is, is we don't know what we're going to get from the state or federal government in terms of financial support. Uh, so, you know, I think the administration and the board has done a good job in giving us a safety net um, right now in terms of, I think it's called the fund equity, um, giving the district some financial security. Uh, however, in order to, to move forward, I think we have to continue hiring the best teachers. I think we have to maintain solid public relations with both uh, the business world and the general civil world in terms of bringing people into the school. Um, we have to continually update and promote the curriculum. And this is a fantastic district, and uh, <clears throat> it certainly was one of the reasons that we moved to Midland in, my, in the decision-making process that my wife and I went through uh, with her job. Hard choices and hard cuts are going to have to be made, and that's just a reality I think we all have to accept. <clears throat> Once we do that, I think we can move forward. Thank you. Would anyone else care to make further comment about the question? Well, I think we're going to have an opportunity to expand programs. Um, there are after-school initiatives that are funded that we haven't been taking advantage of. This P through 20 will give us an opportunity to offer preschool. And currently, the preschool is only funded. Uh, there, you need gap funding to offer the preschool at Midland Public Schools. But this new uh, Oxford Foundation, they're looking at funding preschools so that um, we will be able to hire excellent teachers to work at these preschools. And these preschool programs are showing my do My sister works over on Grand Rapids School Board, and they did a pilot preschool program. Those kids went from at-risk kids from 17% kindergarten ready to 80% kindergarten ready. And while I was talking with Carl in the office, he was saying that for every dollar spent on preschool, $17 is saved later over uh, the lifetime of the <coughs> students. Thank you. <clears throat> Any others? Okay. Um, the next question is for um, Scott. Other than budget, what do you see as the greatest challenge facing our district over the next four years? The greatest challenge over the next four years, it's kind of hard for me to, to give you that perspective because I've only lived in Midland for about 18 months. Uh, so it, it, to answer that question very thoroughly, I think I would have to know where we're coming from. And I only have just the tip of the iceberg in terms of where we're coming from. But what I see is the, is the biggest hurdle potentially for the next four years is going to be uh, maintaining student enrollment. Um, so, you know, we have to really really work hard in terms of interacting with students, interacting with the community, and letting people know that this is the place that they want to send their children to go to school. Okay, thank you. Kimberly. Well, I'd prefer to call it the greatest uh, opportunities, and part of Rick Snyder's program is to offer uh, paid for college, and we have college level courses right at Midland Public Schools, so I think we may be able to offer some of that curriculum for uh, more of the average student who graduates college ready, they may be able to take our AP courses and qualify for college credit, and we may be able to find a way to find funding for that. So I think this uh, 
program from Rick Snyder, which is P through 20, is going to have a lot of opportunities that Midland Public Schools, with our excellent teachers, is going to be able to take advantage of. Thank you. Joyce. Well, first of all, I think that, um, like Scott said, we need to start seeing ways we can get more students into the schools. I also feel that um, the, the school, the whole district culture needs to have an open and commun uh, open communication. We need to establish trust between all, all the people in the school, parents, teachers, administrators, the community. Um, I think that communication is a, is, is a big important issue that Midland needs to look at. You have any further comments, anyone? On that question I agree oh. that we need to open communication and really problem solve and to problem solve you have to identify problems so and that would be through communication with uh, parents are there other comments well that's all the questions we have tonight uh, you've done very well um, and we need to finish the forum now with a one-minute closing statement from each candidate. And Kim, I think it's your turn to start. So in closing, my background in accounting, leadership of a local international company, helping my three children in Midland Public Schools, and having a passion for excellence in education will help me be a strong contributor to the Midland Public Schools Board of Education. Thank you. Joyce? Okay, once again, I want to thank the League of Women Voters and the AAUW for conducting this forum and for MCTV to broadcast it thousands of times before the election. <laughs> um, after spending my whole life learning and teaching, I want to become more involved in the education of my own community. The quality of education, the quality of education my children have received in the Midland Public Schools has exceeded my expectations and it's time for me to give back. I've been attending school board meetings during the past couple years and observed the proceedings, discussions, and the protocols, and I've learned a lot from the process. And I realize that I have much to give back to education and to our community, of which our family has been the beneficiary. I want to again state my top three goals um, to in, ensure strong fiscal management and accountability in a challenging fiscal environment, strengthening our educational excellence and our best practice at all district levels, and creating a proactive, transparent communication with our staff, administration, students, and community so that we can build a relationship that includes fairness and trust. Our students are our top priority, and we have to work together to put their needs in the forefront. Thank you, Joyce. And Scott? In closing, I would just like to thank the League of Women Voters and the, the AAUW, as well as everybody here in, in attendance and watching tonight. Um, just about myself, as I, as I stated, I'm committed to this community. I'm here to volunteer my time and energy to make the public schools a better place. And regardless of, of who you vote for, to all the people out there watching, get out and vote. That's the most important thing. Thank you very much. Thank you all for uh, participating tonight. Um, the forum may be seen on the Midland Public Schools website between now and Election Day. It will also be rebroadcast at dates and times which will be listed in the Midland Daily News. Um, I want to thank the candidates, Scott McFarland, Joyce Perry, and Kimberly Vanderkellen for taking the time to come here tonight to tell us about your dreams for the Midland Public Schools and for participating in the forum. The League of Women Voters and the Midland Branch of AAUW appreciate that you have given voters an opportunity to hear your conversations about issues you see facing Midland Public Schools. Voters, I want to remind you once again that the election is on Tuesday, November the 6th. We want to extend a very special thank you to the people who have made this program possible from the Midland Public Schools Instructional Media and Technology Center and the Midland Public Schools TV Channel 98, Billy Dumont Oliver, Robert Lewis, and Larry Patton. Thanks also to the League of Women Voters of the Midland area, members Karen Sherwood, Donna DeVinney, and Carol Swinehart, and to AAUW Midland branch members Jane Wirth and Jody Gardner, and to dual member Terry Townley. All worked together to plan and sponsor this forum. 
We appreciate our live audience. We have about 20 <laughs> people here tonight, which is wonderful. And you, our viewers, and I hope there are hundreds of you out there, please pass the word to your friends and neighbors that their votes are very important. Thank you for watching, and remember this motto, it's my vote, I will be heard. Good day.